So our first act of the night is a stand-up. Um, he is pretty, rich, and a little bit of a bitch. Give it up for Colin Nam! Thank you, thank you Carson. Um, and thank you Lizzo for my opening song, I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> So, I'm still waiting for my antidepressant to kick in, so please be gentle. Uh, uh, some of you may recognize me from my grinder profile. Uh, my professor certainly did. Um, but before you ask, no, it did not get me an A. <laughs> or a D, for that matter. Um, so, I was hooking up with this guy, right, and he's on top of me, and we're making out, and it's super hot, and then all of a sudden he leans back, and he starts making this noise, like, and y'all know how, like, right before a natural disaster hits, all the animals will flee? <laughs> so that's what my soul did uh, from my body as I realized with growing horror that he was collecting in his mouth a massive amount of spit. And I know what you're thinking. It's just like, why didn't you just get out of the way? Well, anytime I'm in an awkward sexual situation, I inflate into a sex doll. Um, <laughs> That's what I did in that moment. I just inflated and I had that big O mouth as well, which incidentally gave him the perfect spot to spit that massive amount of saliva into my mouth. And it's weird because like, obviously I'm fine swapping spit whenever we're like making out or whatever, and I definitely swallow worse things. So it's kind of like, why is that a big deal breaker? But I've started to realize that people have interesting barriers when it comes to intimacy. There's this one guy and we were about to hook up and we were talking about the things that we were into and not into because obviously consent is important. Um, and y'all should, that is the basic thing, come on. Um, and so he goes, I'm not really into kissing, which I'm sorry, I just think that's weird. You're gonna put your mouth on my butthole, but my mouth is too much for you? I just don't really get it, I'm sorry. Um, I hate when guys ask me if I like big cock, okay? It's a non-starter. What does a big penis really do for me anyways? This is just miss my prostate and thrust directly into my digestive system? That's cute, I mean... Everyone wants to talk about getting their guts rearranged until they meet a penis that's long enough to reach your lower intestines and suddenly it's not fun anymore. <laughs> and like, I guess it stretches me out, but so does a good chiropractor. <laughs> so, I keep trying to get off grinder because I'm tired of people spitting in my mouth. Um, <laughs> But honestly, Tinder isn't a whole lot better. I mean, the good news is people try to pee on me a lot less, which is great. But sometimes, sometimes people's personalities are worse than their sexual tendencies. I, I've noticed that people don't know what to write in their profile, so you see a lot of repeating stuff. Uh, one I see a lot is we'll get like, oh, just a gym looking for his Pam, or even like, Pam looking for his gym. Okay. <laughs> I guess those are the new positions now. We, no longer are we tops or bottoms. We identify solely as the office characters. Um, you know, speaking of Jim, John Krasinski, wow. What a disappointment. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love the CIA too, a cock in ass, you know? Yeah, it's the only CIA I like. Um, so, I recently had my first threesome. My first purposeful threesome. Um, I've had, the majority of them have been on accident, and it's because I show up, I show up expecting there to be one guy, and then there end up being two guys there, and I'm like, oh, this is weird, should, I, should we like go somewhere else? And they're like, no, it's cool, um, and they both start getting undressed, and I'm like, too socially awkward to do anything, but inflate into a sex doll. Um, and so I'm just an inflatable Pam, stuck between a Jim and a Roy. Um, the good news is that we don't need other people for sexual gratification. No, uh, masturbation is healthy, it is natural, it is fun, and no one can fuck you like you can go fuck yourself, okay? Um, the tricky bit is finding what works for you. I've used a lot of different things. Um, 
I've used markers, I've used a hairbrush, um, a plunger. Uh, one time I used a Christmas candle and it dyed my butthole red and I thought it was hemorrhaging. Um, thank God I finally invested in some dodos. Um, the main issue with that though is <laughs> they didn't come before I left for school and so my mother <laughs> being the helpful spirit that she is, sent them in a care package for me, um, <laughs> along with a note that said, these are too big for you. Um, <laughs> you're gonna have unrealistic expectations. Uh, thank God my parents aren't here right now. <laughs> um, so, I got stung by a bee on Wednesday. Uh, yeah. It's the most penetration I've gotten in weeks. Um, the downside is it didn't ask me for consent, so I considered calling him Donald, you know? Um, but I realized that's really not fair, because that bee cares way more about the environment. Um, <laughs> speaking of despicable people, I feel like we're really too hard on Jeffrey Dahmer. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna be real, if you lived in Milwaukee that long, you'd probably start eating people too. <laughs> Do you think Jeffrey Dahmer was ever like sitting in his living room and was like, I'm craving Mexican tonight. <laughs> I mean, you've gotta get tired of eating the same thing every single day. I'm, although, I gotta say, I respect his dedication to leftovers. <laughs> um, okay, wait, I need to put this out first. Uh, I've started doing this with my fingers whenever I'm looking for something. <laughs> and uh, I don't really know where it came from, but I figured there's only two sources that are possible. Either my fingers are gaining sentience and trying to become spiders, or the Goblin King that the old wizard trapped inside my soul when I was born is finally, st finally starting to gain control. Um, but either way, great update for my self-image. Um, <laughs> Which is great, because honestly, being gay does a lot of bad things to my body image. Um, for a straight man, I'd be considered average or even slender. But for a gay man, I'm kind of pushing chubby, which is fine, which is fine. Um, Lizzo wrote Tempo about me. I'm, uh, we're all about these thick bitches, you know? Uh, and then other times, I'm like, you know, short-term bulimia can't be that bad, right? <laughs> Newsflash, it is. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm your high school principal. <laughs> now I realize that body image is a complicated subject, which is why I'm sitting backwards in this chair to remind you that even though I'm your high school principal, I'm also a person, <laughs> and we can all be comfortable here. Now let me tell you something. You are allowed to love your body. Not obligated, but allowed. <laughs> But while you are not obligated to love your body, it is sure as hell better than giving into whatever a whitewashed, ableist, capitalistic version of yourself that you think that you are supposed to be. Let me tell you something. You do not exist for the pleasure of other people. You are not here to fit some arbitrary aesthetic standards. You are not a commodity. You are a person. You are an experience. And you are not here to be defined by the, whatever the people on the outside of your body thinks about you. Your health and your happiness is far more important than anything. That being said, um, I really do think that the best solution for my own body image is simply uh, not to have one. Um, <laughs> I'd really like to be one of those ghost type Pokemon um, where like, I'm not really a thing, I'm more like an object that's been possessed, like, I'm a spooky spirit of some sort, but I'm also a little teapot short and stout, you know? Or on the opposite end, I think it could be really fun, and, and bear with me on this one, okay, because this one's a little bit out there, I think it could be really great if I just like, summoned a demon and like let it take control over my body so I just didn't have to deal with it. Um, you know, kind of like they did in The Conjuring or, or The Conjuring 2 or Catholicism. It's... I just... You know, I'm not really doing much with it so maybe they can. 
After all, at the end of the day, if Jesus won't take the wheel, maybe Satan will. Um, so I'm a barista, which, uh, that's a short way to say I hate Starbucks. Um, Starbucks has royally fucked people's understanding of what coffee is. So a common thing that happens is someone will uh, come in and they'll order a macchiato and I always have to ask, do you want caramel in that? Because Starbucks did the caramel macchiato and everyone's super fucking obnoxious about it. So um, this guy comes in and he's like, well, is it a macchiato without caramel? Listen. <laughs> The macchiato I am serving you is already a bastardization of the traditional Italian macchiato, which translates to mean of marked coffee. In America, we just serve you an upside down version of a latte and call it a day. I am already serving you a monstrous disfigurement of the coffee form, which has been around since you were shitting your pants and smearing it on the fucking wall, you uncultured swine, you, you, you caffeine heathen. Who are you? Who the fuck are you? Who are you to come in here and ask me if it's a macchiato without some fucking caramel in it? I seriously, I hate you so much. I hate you so much. I wish that I could rip your arms off of your torso and beat you with them until you have some fucking sense in your head asking me if it's a macchiato without any fucking caramel. It's my job to answer questions the customers have, and there are so many misconceptions about coffee. Um, like just the other day, I had a woman come in, and, and she asked me, what's a latte? I was really glad to answer that question for her. Um, then she asked me, what's a, what's a cappuccino? What's a mocha? What's a breve? What's a macchiato? <laughs> What's espresso? <laughs> That's all my time today. Thank you all so much.